Be with you in a minute. Hang on. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It is the end of the month, so it is time for my monthly playlist video. Yes, this is a video in which I just talk about the albums and CDs that I listen to just for fun, for no uh, reason related to any of the other videos on my channel, just the stuff that I just put on for when I'm sequestered here at home working remotely or when I don't feel like doing anything else but listening to music, which sometimes is just not a bad thing to just sit and do. Uh, yeah, I was afraid that uh, this was going to be a badly done video because uh, with all the stuff that was going on this month with, you know, not having internet for three weeks and the other normal chaos that goes on, I didn't remember keeping track of the stuff that I'd been listening to. So a few days ago I thought, oh crap, I'm going to have to forensically reconstruct in my mind the stuff that I listened to. Uh, but lo and behold, uh, as I was uh, fiddly, fidgeting through the stuff on my desk, I found the notepad and uh, buried a couple of pages down was my uh, playlist that I wrote down as I went. So, uh, And I, I didn't remember that I did it, obviously, which uh, is not surprising with my memory, the way my memory's been over the last few weeks. So yes, fortunately, I did not have to go uh, do detective work and reconstruct my playlist. I've got it right here for you. Uh, but first of all, before I get to the actual playlist, uh, as I like to do in each playlist video but forgot to do last month is a talk about a couple of random things uh ran random or not so random miscellaneous stuff just to kind of put it in with the playlist video to beef up the playlist video a bit uh, a couple of things i wanted to talk about today were first of all the uh, recent passings of uh, music luminaries noteworthy music uh personalities that we lost over the past month or in this case two months since i forgot to talk about it last month uh, the first one on the list is uh, probably the least recognizable name on my list here, but it is definitely he definitely left his mark in the music world. I'm talking about jazz drummer Jimmy Cobb. Uh, his most famous claim to fame was that he worked with Miles Davis for a number of years. So yes, a very uh, uh, well-known in the jazz world drummer, and he passed away from lung cancer, so Godspeed, Mr. Cobb. Next up on the list is a slightly more recognizable name, probably much more recognizable actually, Ellis Marsalis Jr. He was the uh, patriarch of the Marsalis musical family, uh, which in includes, uh, of course, the very well-known jazz uh, artists Branford and Winton Marsalis. And he was unfortunately one of the two deaths over the past couple months from COVID-19. Uh, the other one being John Prine, who we all um, were all at least aware of John Prine. I am actually not familiar with his music. I don't think I've ever checked out John Prine, um, you know, premeditatedly, you know, not willingly at least. I may have heard his stuff in passing. But uh, I think I, I do have to check out his stuff, I think, uh, now that he's gone. Unfortunately, it is uh, human nature with us to sometimes not appreciate or uh, check out artists until they're gone. You see their albums skyrocket up on to the top of the charts, obviously, right after they pass away. So uh, I think I may check out his stuff. He did have a very critically acclaimed album last year, was it? Uh, but yeah, I never bothered checking it out. So uh, I'm not sure what I'm missing, but I think I need to find out what I've been missing. Uh, the last two names on my list are probably the most recognizable of all of them. Uh, and the first one is R&B soul singer Bill Withers. Uh, he passed away. He was very famous back in the uh, early 70s, I think was when he started recording, and he actually didn't start recording until his 30s. He was in his 30s when he started. And of course, Ain't No Sunshine and Lovely Day are probably his two best-known songs. Oh, and what was the other one? Oh, there's another one on here. Oh, Lean On Me. Fantastic song. I love that song. So yeah, he had a very um, prolific, if not long-lived, career. He actually didn't start recording until the early 70s, and he actually retired from recording in 1985 because of uh, questionable treatment by the record industry, unfortunately. I think they've, they have gotten a little bit better at that. They've eased up on that in recent years, but unfortunately, uh, Bill Withers developed such a distaste for the way he was treated uh, by the record industry that, uh, yeah, his recording career only lasted, what, 15? maybe 20 years so but he gave us a lot of good songs in that uh, amount of time and this cd actually incidentally i inherited from my sister so yeah i unfortunately didn't have any bill withers until i came into it uh, from my sister's collection so thank you kimmy for the bill withers cd and the most famous name on the list over the past couple of months is uh, undoubtedly one that uh, you probably know who i'm going to mention it is little richard uh, i i 
personally I've been I've loved Little Richard for a number of years now one of the pioneering artists in rock and roll in the early days of rock and roll and uh, he, he broke a lot of the color barriers uh, throughout his career he always believed in ignoring the racial divides and color, color lines in music and that actually continued during his uh, more than one career transition between the music and the ministry he became a preacher and uh, was kind of a born-again born again Christian at the end of the 50s, early 60s, I believe. So he abandoned music, at least secular music, for a while. And as a preacher, one of his big causes was fostering peace and unity between the races, something that we could really use right now, unfortunately. And yes, not only do I have that best of CD, but I also have a uh, the Record Store Day repressing back in 2012 of his first album, Here's Little Richard. So, yeah. Definitely a major artist in the history of rock and roll and one of the fantastic, just so many fantastic songs out of uh, Little Richard's career. Just uh, a great, great artist. Uh, the next order of business in today's video is, again, something I've been wanting to do for a couple of months at least, a while now, and that is uh, recognize, uh, give a little shout out to uh, some of the new YouTubers that I've come across recently, new to me at least, and they're the ones that I think you all should be watching if you're not watching them yet and subscribing to them. They put out some really good content and I, I really enjoy watching them. First on the list is The Arp, that's what he calls himself, and uh, he's been around for, I think, uh, not very long, only about uh, less than six months, I think. And he is a uh, he does album reviews primarily, and uh, and uh, he I think he's pretty good at it. Kind of has the uh, a straightforward, almost ASMR-ish approach. He speaks in a very even even calm tone, very ASMR and uh, enjoyable to watch. And he has good uh, he does good breakdowns of music that uh, al albums out there and sometimes singles that uh, maybe we all should be listening to. Uh, the next one on the list is Matt's Random Journeys, and I've actually been a watcher of Matt for several uh, several months, maybe close to a year now. And uh, you know, same kind of thing as uh, the RP's, you know, album reviews primarily, and very much of a a uh, uh, straightforward kind of a, a DIY aesthetic, low key, lo fi, I guess you'd say. And uh, well constructed, again, well constructed critiques of albums, and he does a great job at what he does, and uh, I think he's worthy of a subscribe and a and regular watching. I'm still catching up on, you know, from my internet internet blackout, I'm still catching up on uh, watching YouTube videos of, for uh, all the channels I subscribe to. But uh, yeah, they both put out uh, good, steady, regular streams of content. So uh, yeah, give them a subscribe, each of those, uh, if uh, you haven't yet. But those are not the only two YouTubers on my list. I still have a few more here. Uh, the next one is Brendan Snyder. And uh, his channel is unique in that uh, he mostly covers classic rock based content, uh, album reviews of classic rock albums. And uh, another thing that kind of sets his channel apart is he does regular music news segments. Uh, I think they're weekly, but uh, yeah, and again, it's mostly news related to classic artists, but um, you know, so, so it's decidedly, his channel is decidedly a classic rock fan bent to it, but still it's worth watching, obviously, since I'm calling, calling it out here, shouting it out. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's very much worth watching and worth subscribing to. It's got, uh, he does, he's great at what he does, what can I say? And the last two YouTubers on my list are Sam the Music Critic, and no, I'm not talking about you, Sam Bennett. This is a different Sam. He is, I believe, Australian. And uh, what strikes me about him is his um, taste in music is pretty wide, according to uh, when I watched his favorite albums of 2019 list. I was very struck by what a wide range of stuff he listens to, and he, he does good, again, good, well-constructed album reviews. So yeah, he's another one worth checking out. And uh, finally, last on the list, but definitely not least, is uh, this guy. He just started within the last month or so, and he's only got, uh, as of when I uh, checked him out, he had 26 subscribers, but he is worthy of a lot more. He is just a natural, and this is Java Tunes. And he is, he is a barista by trade, and that, that's how he got his uh, YouTube screen name. But uh, he does album reviews uh, primarily, and he does a couple of... Uh, barista talk segments that's a, that's not the name of the segment but you know just talks about his job as a barista and stuff but he's got a, a good wit and a great editing style and he again um, as with all the others on this list good well thought out critiques of album reviews uh you know i might not always agree with his critiques as you know as is the case with all these but you know then that's that's the beauty in youtube's youtube channels and in life in general if you did uh, always agree with something it would life would be boring in my opinion so yeah he hearing the differences of opinion and stuff is just great but yeah Java tunes he is just great at what he does and he is definitely definitely worth 
a lot more subscribes. Uh, your your subscription feed in YouTube would be the better for subscribing to not just Java Tunes, but all of the YouTubers on this list. Okay, and now let's go on to the main event, the playlist proper, the stuff that I listened to over the past month, and uh, a couple of recurring themes in this batch of stuff. Uh, first of all, it's all vinyl. Yes, I pretty much, for the most part, gave my CD player a rest for the past month. It just happened to be vinyl that I was in the mood for more often than not. And uh, another kind of a theme going on here is it's all old school stuff. It's mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s is pretty much the entire this entire playlist. And these first couple titles, uh, and a few through this list, are courtesy of my friend from work, Jay. Uh, he uh, was getting rid of a bunch of redundant records or records that he just wasn't going to sell or didn't want to sell for whatever reason. And so I was beneficiary of, oh, nine or ten records in that batch. I, I showed them, showed some of them to you last month, I think. Our first one is Don Ho, Tiny Bubbles. He's, he's kind of been a pop culture punchline in a way. This was, Tiny Bubbles was his one big hit. And yeah, he is a Hawaiian singer, obviously. And kind of pleasant stuff. It's not, you know, stereotypical. I just, for some reason, I was just expecting very uh, cliche, stereotypical Hawaiian stuff, you know. The stuff that is so cliche that it's it would probably not be authentic, but uh, no, it's it's pretty enjoyable stuff. It's you know, not for everybody, probably not your cup of tea, but uh, hey, for passing the time, some you know nice easy listening stuff. It, you couldn't ask for a whole lot better than that, honestly. And then we have uh, Peggy Lee. She is a, a singer from the 50s, 60s uh, that you may or may not have heard of. Uh, she had a few modest hits in the past, but yeah, uh, Big Spender obviously was one of them. What her other big hits were, I would have to look up on Wikipedia. But yeah, I've heard mention of her several times over the years. Uh, she probably ended up performing on the Ed Sullivan show, I would imagine. She was kind of from the right time frame, but uh, a good singer. Honestly, a very good singer. I had never actually had one of her albums before, so yeah. But uh, some guy that I do have several albums from and uh, is one of my all-time favorites. You've heard me talk about him before, Johnny Mathis. This is his uh, the, his second Greatest Hits volume, More Greatest Hits. And let's see, are there any of his really signature songs on here? I It doesn't look like. Uh, I think that his real big signature hits were on his first Greatest Hits album. The very first, or at least the one that really kicked off the Greatest Hits uh, genre, if you can call it that, of record albums. And it was uh, I think it's one of the biggest selling Greatest Hits albums of all time, is his first Greatest Hits album, not this one. But yeah. In my opinion, you cannot go wrong with Johnny Mathis. He could sing the freaking phone book, and it would be wonderful. And I also, this is one that I actually bought from House of Records, uh, his album Heavenly. It's uh, one of the, or no, maybe this was actually a freebie. It couldn't have been a freebie, Johnny Mathis. And it, it was in good shape, too, so no, I, I don't think it was a freebie. I think my brain's uh, not remembering correctly, as I've mentioned before. Uh, but yeah, a great, great album by Johnny Mathis, uh, the title track. A Ride on a Rainbow, and this has his big hit, one of his great big hits, Misty. Fantastic song. A wonderful romantic song. If, you, if you're in the mood to play a rom romantic song for your significant other, Misty will get you. And uh, Moonlight Becomes You. I, I, I really like that song. It was, of all things, I heard it in a Star Trek movie. But of course, Math Johnny Mathis' rendition is much, much better. Yeah, the one in the Star Trek movie was by some unknown singer, I'm not sure. But anyway, wonderful album. Wonderful artist, Johnny Mathis. And then we come to an international artist or two, Charles Aznavour. He is a French pop singer from the 50s. Uh, I don't know if he's still alive or not, but this one this one was in the freebie shelf on House of Records, I remember. Uh, but yeah, good French singer, one of the more, more popular French uh, singers, from, especially from the 50s and 60s. Mostly French songs, and you know I love French songs, so very good, easy listening. I had never actually experienced... Charles Aznavour in an album before, or I don't know if I'd even listened to him at all before then. And then another one, I think this was, yeah, I don't think this was one that Jay gave to me. I think this was actually also on the freebies shelf. Harry Belafonte, Belafonte on campus. Um, and when I looked at this and when I read the back, um, a concert performed for students is still the most spiritually rewarding for an artist. That quote from Harry Belafonte, I assumed this was a live album, but no, it's actually a studio album. Uh, but still, it's whether it was a studio album or not, I would have enjoyed it. It's uh, good stuff. Uh, Harry Belafonte is one of my mother's favorite artists, and she she's loved him for years and years and years. And uh, so yeah, it was uh, kind of. I, I have a greatest hits album of his, but this is the only other title that I've got from him. So this was my first studio album 
experience with him. Um, none of his really big hits are on here, but uh, hey, perfectly enjoyable album, as are all of these. And then we come to the um, some 80s stuff, uh, 80s, late 70s. Oh yeah, 78 is this, this next album. And I think this one was from Jay, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Linda Ronstadt, uh, Living in the USA. This was one of her more popular albums uh, from 1978. And it has uh, Just One Look, which I don't think it was a uh, Ronstadt original. I think it was somebody else did that one. But she also covers the um, Elvis Costello song, Allison, along with uh, Ooh Baby Baby, which was a Temptations or Smokey Robinson hit, I can't remember. And then uh, Love Me Tender, which was, of course, an Elvis Presley classic. <clears throat> so yeah, wonderful, fun album. I really like that one. I, I, I've got a soft spot for Linda Ronstadt, mainly because my sister was very fond of her as well. She had her Greatest Hits CD, which is uh, which I kept from her collection. And then another uh, 80s pop rock diva, so to speak, is Pat Benatar. And this is her sophomore album, I think, Crimes of Passion. Uh, Treat Me Right is the lead off track. That was one of her uh, lesser hit singles, but still a hit single. And Hit Me With Your Best Shot, that was one of her all-time biggest hits. So. Uh, yeah, if, if you're not familiar with Pat Benatar, give her a listen. If you like the pop rock uh, sound from the 80s with female vocals, yeah, she, she is one of the best, in my opinion, from the 80s. Uh, 1980 is when this album was released. So, And this is, this is not my first Pat Benatar album. Actually, actually, I think I spotlit her in a Backtracks not too long ago. Last year, I think it was. And then another 80s, 70s, 80s uh, pop uh, or I think she might have actually dealt into country a little bit also, is Rita Coolidge. A, a good album. This is her self-titled album. I probably her debut. Uh, Crazy Love. She covers the Van Morrison song Crazy Love. She does a great rendition of that. And uh, Ain't That Peculiar, a Smokey Robinson song. I've got a, a Motown theme running through these albums, don't we? And The Happy Song, uh, written by Otis Redding and Steve Cropper. I don't know if that was an Otis Redding song particularly, but uh, this is a very enjoyable album. I really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, that was my first experience with Rita Coolidge. I need to check out more of her stuff. And then uh, these next few, if you are uh, paying attention to my Instagram feed, yes, I am now on Instagram. Check me out. Uh, the link to it will be in the description below. Uh, I pictured these four albums. Uh, I picked them up uh, freebies just the other day from House of Records, and, uh, about a week ago, I guess it was, and listened to them over the course of this past week. Pretty enjoyable stuff. Uh, Carly Simon, her album Another Passenger. Uh, this was, I don't think this was one of her uh, more successful albums, but uh, still enjoyable. I cannot remember the standout songs on here. Sorry. But uh, yeah, Carly Simon, and she was another one that my sister was quite fond of. Uh, and she had one, one of her greatest hits albums, and I think uh, one or two of her other studio, studio albums as well in her collection. So, And then another one who was, uh, you, we all have heard of her. Uh, and I love her to death, and this is Carol King with her album Music, and I actually have this on CD, but I just said, hey, it was free in the uh, freebies bin, so I decided to pick it up. Oh, you should have seen how filthy this record was. I cleaned it, I must have cleaned it four times, gone over it four times with the record cleaner and the sh cloth, and I was still getting a little bit of gunk off it on the on the third run, so. Uh, also, the sleeve was uh, very uh, weathered, very badly damaged, as you might be able to see here on the bottom and top seams. I covered them up with, I taped them back together with uh, clear packaging tape. Not the most graceful way to do it, and it will not help the album's resale value. I don't think it has a resale value, but uh, hey, Carol King album for free. I'm not passing that up. Unless it looks completely trashed, with this, which this one almost did, but it played okay. And then we have Peter, Paul, and Mary. Yes, it's a, probably a, a cliche or punchline artist, but uh, honestly, they were a darn good folk group back in the 60s and 70s. And this is their album 1700, which is they. It was so named because it was uh, the serial number in the Warner Brothers catalog is 1700. So, yay, clever, t clever title. Along with yes, is 90125. That's why they named that album 90125 because that was the catalog number with the label. Uh, but this was, uh, I don't see a copyright date on here, but uh, this has Leaving on a Jet Plane on it, which I think was originally a John Denver song. And also, I Dig Rock and Roll Music, which you know that I love songs about music. And that one was a little, it's a little cheesy. It, it's The title of the song is I Dig Rock and Roll Music, but it doesn't sound at all rock and roll, so that makes it a little bit weird. But hey, I still like it. 
And uh, the song is Love. I can't remember who did that song. Uh, that's a cover from somebody I can't remember. But uh, yeah, a pretty enjoyable album. Uh, not bad, and I, you know, I'm never afraid to add a Peter, Paul, and Mary album to my collection. And yes, that is another artist that my sister had one or two uh, CDs of. And I kept them in my collection. And last but not least, Julio Iglesias. Uh, yes, the, the father of Enrique Iglesias, of course. And uh, Julio has, he has a pretty good voice. It's, uh, it's a little bit, um, how do I say, his vibrato is a little bit too quavery, I think, is, is the right way. I, I'm not putting it very, very well, but there's just something about that vibrato in his voice that I don't really care for. But, hey, this album was uh, pleasant enough to listen to. Uh, this one has the uh, his duet with Willie Nelson, one of his uh, most famous songs, To All the Girls I'd Loved Before. That was uh, might have actually been Julio Iglesias' biggest hit, was a duet with Willie, Willie Nelson. And it also has When I Fall in Love. That's a, an old standard... Um, so he does a good rendition to that. So, yeah, Julio Iglesias, um, not a fantastic artist for me, and not one of my favorites. Uh, it was it was okay, but hey, when you, when an album is free, it costs you zero bucks. How can you pass it up, right? So, but anyway, yes, that will pretty much do it for my playlist for the month of May 2020. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.